Our next speaker is Sabina Salk, Salkic, and um, she is going to make you maybe think twice about the next glass of water you drink, and I'll let her explain why. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sabina Salkic, and I will be telling you about our work on how Raman spectroscopy can be used for monitoring photocatalytic degradation of X-ray contrast media. So, Kentucky uh, water resources become a growing uh, concern as um, state develop as, as rapid uh, rate that has uh, been recently. Many um, organic compounds end up in wastewater. During wastewater treatments, these compounds are not necessarily removed. So, they end up in our drinking water. One of uh, classes of such a compounds are X-ray contrast media. These compounds are used for diagnostic imaging of soft tissues, like I have example of GI uh, X-ray. So they can be taken orally or they can be injected into a body. So for each application, 200 grams is used, uh, 3.5 million kilograms is used each year. And these compounds are not metabolized by body. So um, here are two compounds that we are studying, uh, diatrazoid and iohexyl. The two things that I have in common are aromatic ring and iodine, which are important in our work. The steps that are involved in the photocolic degradation are light comes in and reacts with titanium dioxide, then leads to forma uh, formation which reacts with uh, oxygen and water, then reacts with eventually organic compounds, then leads to something simple molecules such as carbon dioxide and water. Previous work has been done with LCMS monitoring the products, which has disadvantage. Uh, preparation of sample is too complicated and time consuming. So, and it's done every 30 minutes. Our goal was to find something that's faster and simple, simple when it comes to sample preparation, but eventually yield the um, same results as they have done in the past. So we chose ramen because it's a little sample is required, preparation of little sample is required, not sensitive to water and uh, turbid samples because our photocatalyst is uh, suspended in a solution. So also, by measuring molecular vibration, we can con connect changes in the spectrum to changes of molecular structure. Here I'm having diatrazoid and ionohexol on the top where we are, uh, took spectra before it was introduced to UV light. Each peak is represent represents vibrational modes. On the bottom, I'm having integrated area as a function of time where we are um, monitoring the changes of each peak individually. So uh, what we can see that peaks are uh, decreasing over the time so we can confirm that degradation is occurring. So in addition to the, uh, degradation, we can see the changes uh, to the peaks relative to one another which provides us clue about mechanism of degradation. And in, I invite each of you individually to come by my posture where I have more data with more details to explain. Future work, um, what we have done measuring kinetics every 30 minutes, but we eventually want to go faster, like for example, five minutes. So we want to know what is happening to reaction during those 30 minutes. Also, we want to uh, use LCMS and Raman in same time to uh, identify intermediates that are forming. This can be done with a different X-ray contrast agent like upper middle. Um, also, we can do this with estrogens as in, in form runoffs and pHs, which are carcinogenic uh, byproducts of coal and oil combustions with using the source which is a surface enhancement Raman spectroscopy to improve the Raman uh, signal. 
At this point, I would like to thank Dr. Matthew Nee as my advisor, Dr. Maddox, who help us with uh, calculations, uh, who provide us a server for uh, vibrational calculations, and uh, Bango Yan, who loaned us his UV lamp. And this work was founded by, by um, Ogden College of Science and Engineering. And thank you, and I look forward to meet each of you at my posters.